Hi there. Welcome to Ben's Astrophotography. Tonight is the second clear night since I have my new mount. Last time, I had USB connection problems on my mini computer. So tonight, I will switch to my laptop and I will test three things on my CM40EC mount. First, cable management. Let's check if it's reliable on both power and USB connections. Second, guiding. I will try longer exposure in PHD2 and see if it can help with my guiding. I will also run a guiding assistant in PHD2 to check the periodic error and backlash of my mount. And number three will be a test of unguided exposures. Just one note on balancing. I'm not a big fan of doing East Heavy, at least for tonight, I have RA well balanced on the center. Neither east nor west is heavier than the other side. I did DEC balance with counterweight bar being horizontal, cause on that position, the balance on DEC is most sensitive. Okay, before it gets completely dark, I want to show you the cable management here. Uh, it's really convenient. It's at the end of the dovetail bar. Uh, like here and there's a USB uh, cable and there's a 12 volt DC so everything you need on the OTA you can connect it here and then uh, at the end of the poloscope uh, there's a cable coming out and you can connect it to your USB hub or your computer uh, wherever it is so uh, with this cable management there's no dangling lines and uh, the, the things above the OTA and uh, the dovetail bar is kind of independent. Let's jump to the guiding now. I'll start with one second exposure. You see the screen becomes very noisy. So now I have to change the guiding camera's gain to a lower value. I just upgraded my PHD2 and the brain icon for setting is gone. So I have to go through the menu on guide and then advanced setup. The gain value is under the tab of camera. The value is actually in percentage. 100 means the maximum gain on this camera, which is definitely very noisy. I'll change it from 100 to 50 and hit the loop again. Now it looks great. Decreasing guiding camera's gain definitely helps to make the star signals more stable. And that's very important for good guiding. Now, I'll let PHD do auto select star. It will select a non saturated star with highest SNR. Then I should do a calibration by pressing shift key while hitting the green guiding icon. I'll fast forward the process. This is really just a test to move the mount in all four directions east, west, north, south and measure how much the guiding star moves on the camera sensor. Once calibration is done, the guiding will start right away. The total RMS error reads around one arc sec. That's not really ideal. And I see a lot of conflicting spikes on the graph. PHD is telling the mount to go north and then after a couple seconds to go south. This might be just chasing after the seeing, cause the seeing is really below average tonight. To fix that, I will increase the guiding exposure to 2 seconds per frame. You can see there is an immediate boost on the SNR line and the graph looks better. Also, the number of spikes decreased very obviously. Let's clear the graph and I see the total RMS error is below 0.7 arc sec now. This is good enough for the seeing I have tonight. So I'll start the exposure. My target is Messier 101. I'm using the green filter. So I need a really low gain on the main camera to prevent overexposure. I will take several one minute subs to check the star dots. Now I come back to PHD and the total RMS gets a bit worse. So I increase the guiding exposure to 3 seconds. After 3 exposures, 
On the left hand side of Sequence Generator Pro, you can see the HFR value of these three subs are very stable. And uh, in 150% view, the stars are really round and tight. That's great. Now I will start the ultimate test tool in PHD. It's called Guiding Assistant. It will stop the guiding and set the guiding star free. And then it records the movement of the guiding star and calculates the tracking accuracy of the mount, as well as the error of my polar alignment. A full gear cycle of most mount is 5 to 7 minutes, so make sure you run this assistant for at least 5 minutes. When it gets to 300 seconds, I hit stop. It will then start to test the backlash of DEC. And once it's all done, I have a report like this. Look at this. Both RA and DEC drift is much less than 1 arcsec per minute. And the backlash graph is so close to the ideal line. I'm really happy with this result. Okay, last test. Unguided exposure. Before I was able to do that, M101 just sets into my house. And uh, now I switch to M13. It has a lower DEC coordinate, which means its linear motion is faster than M101. I start with 30 seconds, then 1 minute and 2 minutes. Surprisingly, all of them look very good. Stars are very much round. So I continue with a couple 5 minute subs. As it shows on image history details, the HFR starts to increase on 2 minute subs. And that's probably caused by longer exposure only. But for 5 minute subs, I can see the star gets a bit oval. And if I switch between those 5 minute subs, the motion of star gets very obvious. Remember, According to the guiding assistant report, my polar alignment tonight is 3.9 arcmin off. That's not bad, but still not perfect. And that could just be the reason of this star motion. Unfortunately, I can't tell right now. I will have to gather more data before giving a final conclusion on this. To wrap up for tonight, CEM40EC comes with a handy and functioning cable management. The connection works fine. My camera's cooling was kept at minus 30 degrees Celsius, so power is good. And the USB download speed is also fine. Each sub takes about 8 seconds to download, same as before. It passes my guiding test with very good results. Very little drift and backlash. Under a poor seeing like tonight, longer guiding exposure does help. Unguided exposures up to 2 minutes look great and stable. 5 minute stars see slight star motion, and it might be caused by my polar alignment error. Overall, I'm really really happy with my test results tonight. This CM40EC is a very promising mount. I will definitely have a lot of fun using it. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.